Welcome to Excel Campus. My name is John and this is the second video in a series of solutions to our data cleansing challenge. So in this video, we're going to look at a solution with the sum product function. Now, if you didn't see my previous video on the challenge, I presented this challenge to convert this text here in column C, these time stored as text, to convert those into actual time values. And we have this solution or the result here in column D. So there's a lot of different ways to go about this. Thanks again if you posted a reply to the blog post or on the YouTube video with this possible solution. In this video, we're going to look at a very creative solution using the sum product function. And I should also mention that you can download this file and follow along. I'll put a link to that in the description below this video. So let's go ahead and jump over to this sum product function sheet and I'll quickly explain the formula and then I'll walk through how to create it. Also want to say a big thanks to both Laura and also Wong from WMFExcel.com for posting the solution. I think this is an awesome one. And what this does, it actually uses a lot of the same formula that we used in the last video with the text functions. However, this formula also converts all of those time increments. So it first extracts all the time increments from the text here and then converts those all into seconds. So we do some multiplication there with the sum product function to uh, convert those into seconds, add all of those up and then divide by the number of seconds in a day to give us that time value. And one advantage of this formula is it can also handle over 24 hours. So in this uh, data set, we don't have any times over 24 hours, but this was a question that came up in the comments. If you do have over 24 hours, this formula will be able to handle that and still provide or produce the correct result. All right, so let's go ahead and write the formula. I'm here on the sum product walkthrough sheet. I'm going to add a column for the time value. And uh, we can actually use the formula that we used in the previous video for the text function. This sum product function uses the same basic logic there. So we'll jump back to that text function sheet. And here within the minute column, I'm just gonna hit F2 to edit this. I'm going to copy the formula text here. Just copy, select the formula text, hit Control C to copy that. That way we don't need to rewrite this whole thing. I also explained all that in the previous video, so if you haven't seen that video, go check that out for an explanation on uh, that portion of the formula. So we'll jump back here, hit F2 here. I'm gonna go ahead and paste that formula. We, of course, we need the equal sign here, and we're also going to start this with the sum product function. So we'll just start typing sum product. We can see here that the sum product function returns the sum of the products of corresponding ranges or arrays. And I'll explain what that means. We'll go ahead and hit tab to tab into that. And sum product allows us to specify multiple ranges or arrays, which we can see here in the arguments. And to specify an array within a formula, we can do that with curly brackets. So we can actually create a list of values. And we're going to do that in the search function. So right here, instead of for our fine text argument, instead of looking for what was in cell E1, the word minute, uh, we're going to change that. And we're going to look for all three of those values, hours, minutes, and seconds. So to do that, we're going to first uh, type the curly bracket, the open curly bracket there. And then we'll type it within quotation marks, we're gonna type an H. You could type out hour here, or you can just shorten that to H, uh, comma, and then within quotations, um, M for minutes, comma, and then SEC for seconds. And we use SEC because we do have S's in other places within our text where minutes and hours are plural. So this SEC just makes that uh, unique. And then we'll uh, close that array with the curly brackets. So we now have these uh, three different items within our array and the formula is going to evaluate all of those. So you can kind of think of the formula actually calculating three different times to return those results for each of those searches. So uh, now before I forget, I'm also going to put a closing parentheses at the end of the formula here. And then the one other thing we'll need to do is remove the max function. We can't use the max function with this array because it will return the max of the array and we don't necessarily want that. So we're going to remove this and we do have a workaround for that. But for right now, we'll just remove that. And then this was the uh, one that we were using as the other argument for max. We'll delete that extra comma as well. So now we just have our mid function and our search function within it with that array. So at this point here, we're gonna go ahead and hit enter to see that calculation. 
And what this is currently doing is it's finding or extracting all of those time increments and then summing them together. So you can see 10 plus 39 plus 40 actually equals 89. We have 25 here. Now for this one, we're getting an error because we have 2 plus 10 should be 12, but we're only seeing a 10 right here. So we'll fix that next. Before we do that, I also want to show how you can walk through this formula with the evaluate formula window. So if we go to the formulas tab on the ribbon and jump into the evaluate formula window, keyboard shortcut is alt T U F. That'll bring up this evaluate formula window. We can see here where the underlined uh, expression is. That's what's going to be evaluated next. And you can, of course, click the evaluate button or hit spacebar on the keyboard. That will evaluate that. So we can see this evaluates to 25 seconds. And then we're doing the search within that. That's going to return uh, two errors in this case and then the number four. So those would be the positions where it found those uh, letters or, yeah, those letters or those uh, phrases or those text strings minus three for each of those we're getting a one and that'll pass through this our uh, if error is going to handle those errors right there so this is ultimately just going to return this array which is 0, 0, 0025 and again we can continue to evaluate through that now when you're doing that evaluation that does not change the formula at all so you don't have to worry about that and you can close out of that window at any time another good example is if we went to this cell here we can do the same thing start stepping through that and in this case here you can see that it's finding the start starting point of h m and sec as characters 4 13 and 24 subtracting 3 from each of those and then we get these numbers here 10 39 and 40 and uh, summing all those up gives us 89. so that's how the formula is working it's good to kind of step through it and see that now we do have to account for the fact like we have this error down here if we look at this one and evaluate this i'll just step through it really quickly uh, we can see we're getting a error for uh, minutes of course that's correct but we're getting a zero up here for hours so this should be a one and we used to have the max function to account for that or to change that to a one we no longer have that so instead of a zero we need to find a way to make this a one because we want to account for the first position here within the text string so we're going to need to account for that so we'll go ahead and close this and one technique for that is padding with a zero and what i mean by that is we'll jump into the formula here where we have our text reference right here for cell C4, we can use this technique where we type a zero and then an ampersand. And that's just going to add a leading zero uh, to this text string. So now instead of this being two hours, it's going to be zero two hours. And so anything that we have that has single digits here to start with will actually have a zero in front of it. And even if it already has two digits, like 59 minutes here, it's still going to get that zero. But since we're finding the M and then going back three characters from that, uh, we're still only going to return the 59. So 59 there. In the other case, we'd return a zero two, and then the value function would convert that to a number. So pretty tricky stuff here. We also need to pad uh, this reference with the zero, so zero uh, ampersand there. And then at this point again, we can go ahead and hit enter to check our results. Now we have a 12 here instead of a 10, we still have 89, 25. So it looks like everything is calculating properly. So now at this point, we need to convert everything to seconds. And to do that, we'll jump back into the formula. For the sum product function, we can add an additional array. We'll do that right before the closing parentheses. We're going to type a comma here and then uh, again open the curly brackets and for this array we want to multiply the uh, time period by the number of seconds in that time period so within an hour there's 3600 seconds or 60 times 60 comma within a minute there's 60 seconds and then within one second there's one second so we'll just type a one there and then close the curly brackets and then at this point, we can check this again. We'll go ahead and hit enter. And now we're getting the total number of seconds for these time periods or this text-based time. I realized I didn't do a great job of explaining some product when I watched the video back. So I'm adding this section here. So to really get dive into some product, uh, we have this text here and we use that formula to extract these times here from the text for each of these periods. 
Then we also have the seconds in that second array and that provides this product here. So within this column here, we're just multiplying. This is the product function, but same as multiplying these two numbers together. And then we have those numbers and we're adding them all together. So there's some function here to add all of those to give us that total number of seconds. So that's exactly what sum product does. We can also see that right here in this formula, we have those two arrays within sum product. So again, it's going 10 times 3,600, 39 times 60, 40 times one, and then summing all of those together. So that's really just two formulas there or two functions combined to give us sum product. And just to uh, just so you know, you can also reference ranges. So here's some product where we are referencing those arrays as ranges for the times, the number of seconds. And again, it's going to do that math to multiply each and then sum them all together to again, give us the same result. So hopefully that helps explain some product a little better. We'll now jump back to writing the rest of the formula. And then finally, we just need to divide this by the number of seconds in a day so we can convert it to that time format. So to do that, again, we'll jump into our formula here. Out at the very end of the formula, we can divide by, and then you can do math here. So we can say 24 times 60 times 60, close the parentheses. Of course, uh, you can also evaluate that so that we don't have to run that in the formula every time. We can do that with a trick I showed in the last video, which is to select the text here, hit F9 on the keyboard. That's going to evaluate to 86,400, which is the number of seconds in a day. So next we'll just hit enter and that'll give us these fractions. Now, again, these are the fractions of the whole day in Excel, a uh, whole number, one whole number represents a whole day for the calendar system. So all we need to do here is convert these or change the format to the time format. So I'm going to hit control space to select everything there. I'll just go to the uh, format cells window again here within uh, custom. We'll do hours, minutes, and seconds. Oops, there it is right there. Uh, hit OK, and that will convert this to our time format. So that's a way we can do this with the sum product function. Very elegant solution there. Also might be tricky if you're seeing arrays and sum product for the first time. So I encourage you to step through this and check it out and write it for yourself. Now, one advantage that I mentioned at the beginning of the video is that we can handle more than 24 hours here. And I'll just show that. We'll just change this text here. Instead of uh, 10 hours, let's go ahead and change this to 40 and hit enter. And what we'll see here is a 16 hours 39. So that doesn't look right. However, if we uh, modify the format, change the format, I'll hit control one on the keyboard to bring up format cells. Here we can actually add the number of days as well to our format. Right here at the beginning, we can type a D for day and then period. And this is the uh, format for duration, which we'll see in the next video on Power Query. This is uh, how Power Query formats durations. Uh, so this will now show one day dot and then 16 hours, 39 minutes, 40 seconds. So we'll go ahead and hit OK there and that will show that in that cell. So if you did have uh, time periods over 24 hours, you'd want to change the number formatting for the entire column there uh, to show those days. So you'd have days, hours, minutes, and seconds. So thanks again to everyone that contributed solutions. Of course, if you have any questions or suggestions about this solution, please feel free to leave a comment below this video. In the next video, we're going to take a look at a solution with Power Query. So I'm looking forward to that. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. If you enjoyed that video, there are a few simple things you can do to help me out. If you're watching this video on YouTube, click the like button below the video and leave a comment with any questions or feedback. And please don't forget to subscribe to my free email newsletter to get more tips and tricks that will help you learn Excel. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you soon.